So the first biome that we're going to talk about is going to be the famous one, tropical rainforests. So um, I've got pictures of all of these that we can see. Here is a tropical rainforest. But before I show you that, um, this is actually a pretty cool map to just kind of show you the different ecosystems and where they're found. So you can definitely see that there are going to be some that are just between the tropics. There's going to be some that are just around the equator. Um, and then there's some that's only above and below the tropics. So we're going to get into each of these. Um, so the tropical rainforest, if you look at this, you can already come up with a couple of ideas about it, right? You see a lot of moisture, so they do get a lot of rain, some of the most rain of all, all the ecosystems. Um, you can also see there's a lot of lush vegetation. As I'm sure you know, there's a lot of diversity here. So a lot of organisms are going to be living here, a lot of rain, a lot of um, plants, animals, that type of thing, right? Okay, so that's our tropical rainforest. The next one is going to be the savanna. The savanna is going to be big grasslands and dry climates, but they're going to be right around the tropics. So they're going to be big open landscapes, widely spaced trees, not a lot of rainfall. This is just above desert rainfall, so not a lot at all. And so what's going to happen is plants and animals are going to be most active, as in mating and reproducing, that type of thing, during the rainy season. So to show you what a um, savanna looks like, this is going to be a savanna, right? So you can see that you've got those widely spaced trees. It does look very dry, and that's because it is very dry. You can see that it is bordered by the tropics. Okay, the next one is going to be the desert, and so the desert is going to get less than 30 centimeters of rain per year, and as you can see and as you know, the desert does not have a lot of vegetation whatsoever, and most of the vegetation there is very small because it's all about water conservation. They're also going to be very thorny to help with water conservation. Now I want you to think about when these organisms are going to be most active. They're going to be most active at night, so you're going to have a lot of nocturnal creatures. The other thing you want to remember, though, is that when it's this dry, you can have major fluctuations in temperature. So it's very, very hot during the day, but it can get below freezing at night, and that's because there's not a lot of moisture there to kind of hold on to that temperature. So that's going to be the desert. Next one is going to be the temperate grasslands. So most of the Midwest in our country is going to be what was temperate grassland. Now let's look at the characteristics here to kind of talk about that. Um, so you're halfway between the equator and the poles, and you're going to have deep fertile soils with perennial grasses. So fertile soil means there, there's a lot that can grow from that, right? What is the main um, industry that's in the Midwest? Agriculture. I wonder if there's a correlation there, right? That's why agriculture set up there is because it was such fertile soil. Now perennial grasses are going to be ones that come back every year. Um, and before we wiped out the buffalo, um, there was huge herds of grazing animals that were going to be going through these grasslands. So, sorry, I always have to poke in the humans screwing it all up. Okay, next one is going to be temperate broadleaf forests. So these are going to be hardwood forests that are going to have plentiful rains and drop their leaves before the winter. Okay, now when I say mild climates, that means in general, ta like talking about versus the poles or the equators, right? Like that kind of idea. So um, you're, you're not going to have major, major changes in fluctuations and, you know, like major, major cold and major, major hot. Just warm summers and cool winters is how you can think about it. Um, so if we were going to look at a picture, oh, here we go, right? So you can actually see the leaves that are changing because they're going to drop them. Now, why do they drop their leaves? There's a couple of reasons. One is that they don't want to lose a lot of moisture in the winter. And the other is if you have a bunch of leaves and then snow falls, your branches are going to break, right? You've seen that here where we have early snow before the trees have dropped their leaves and branches are falling everywhere. Okay, then we're going to have our northern coniferous forests. And so we have that here in Colorado. And so um, nutrient-poor soils, um, sorry, let me get back here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, winters are going to be cold and it's going to be pretty dry. If you think about Colorado, that fits, right? Um, the next one, chaparral. This is going to be, um, like if you think about Northern California, South Africa, um, pretty dry and they're going to have rainy winters, but then those long dry summers. And so the organisms that live there are actually going to have drought adaptations. 
to deal with a lot of the fires that happen. So um, some of the cool adaptations they can have is like the saw palmetto, super cool plant. They actually send have a clonal root system, so they'll actually send out clones of themselves, you know, a couple hundred feet away, so that if a fire comes through, their genes are still conserved over here, which I think is kind of cool. Um, then the next one is going to be the taiga. Taiga is a huge ecosystem, and so it's going to be kind of marshy. Um, a lot of trees are going to just kind of be in these dense stands, and then it's going to be kind of open. And you can actually see a great picture of taiga right, um, oh, no, that's tundra. Um, here's taiga right here. So um, you can see a lot of open land, and then you just have those trees there. Now very close to the taiga is going to be the tundra. Not a lot of trees, very, very rough, and so um, that's going to be even further north. Now, people ask, in Colorado, do we have these ecosystems? And yeah, we do at higher elevations, right? So we kind of have a lot of different ecosystems um, or biomes here in um, Colorado, which is kind of cool. Um, now, the last thing about tundra is that they're going to have permafrost, which means that the last three feet, the top three feet of the um, earth, are going to permanently be frozen. So that's kind of something that's very, very indicative that you're in the tundra. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to start talking about ocean circulation and how that affects climate.